Alrighty, good morning. I'm on a little bit earlier today than I normally am. Um, so I hope that's okay. I know there probably won't be a lot of folks jumping on right now at the live, but you guys can watch it um, during the replay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a source of risk for companies that really isn't talked about a lot. Um, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Raven Willis. For those who don't know me, hopefully most of you do, for all the new members in the group, uh, thanks for joining, thanks for all the new members. Um, I am a lawyer in Texas, Keller, Texas, right outside of Fort Worth, and I specialize in uh, writing, negotiating, reviewing contracts, um, and other complex um, agreements for businesses. So what I wanted to do, and I explained this a couple of, I think last week, I want to focus for the next, um, I don't know, however long until I can run out of material, uh, on helping e-commerce businesses get prepared for the holidays. Because I myself actually own an e-commerce business too, so I'm doing all these things that I'm telling you guys to do. So today I want to talk about, again, customer reviews and how those can be a serious source of liability for your company, for your brand. So what mostly everybody, hopefully, everybody who's watching this who has an e-commerce business knows or should know that customer reviews are probably one of the most widely used mechanisms to convert visitors over to a customer. You know, a lot of times it'll push the customer over or the potential customer over to purchase based on, you know, social proof. Um, I myself, from my, my website, I noticed, um, sorry, my cat's trying to get in again. I myself noticed the minute that I put in a, um, the, I think the, the plugin or the app on my Shopify store to allow customers to review it, I saw a huge jump in my conversion rate. So it's a it's a wonderful tool to use. And if you have an e-commerce store, or if, actually you don't even have to have an e-commerce store, if you have a website and you don't have customer reviews on there, you need to get it on there. It's wonderful. But here's the thing. A lot of times when customers review your product, what they do is they, um, they have a tendency to knock other products. And I, I myself, I, I've done it before, not necessarily to knock another product, but they compare your product to a competitor's product, which is totally okay because um, especially, you know, that helps the social proof if, if, if the customer is able to compare some popular brand with your brand. You know, it's, it's a good thing, but here's the problem is that when you have customers who kind of do a little too much, like if they mention a, a big brand, uh, like say like a Clorox or a Tide, for me, I sell cleaning products, so if they mention a Clorox or a Tide, what that does is it might trigger the uh, Clorox or the Tide, the big brand, because um, they're monitoring this, it might trigger them to come and start scrutinizing your website. And the liability that arises from that is twofold. It could be a libel or it can uh, be trademark infringement. And libel, what that is, is basically when you say something about another entity, person, brand, company that damages them, that's not true. And so customers are very, um, are sometimes very generous with the verbiage that they use when they're reviewing, you know, products. So these big companies, you have to be very careful about them. They have teams of individuals, departments where all they do is monitor brands. They've got Google alerts and all kinds of software that are constantly um, scrubbing the, the internet for alerts or anything that pops up with their name in it. And they have literally teams of lawyers just sitting around on retainer waiting for um, waiting for something to come up so they can burn down that money because they can't touch the money. And so if you have if you run into if if you run into a big company that's very litigious, meaning they like to litigate and they take 
everything to court. There are companies that are like that. They have the funds to do it and they will do it. If you run up against a company that does that, it's not going to necessarily go over well for you because even though, let's say, something on your site isn't doesn't necessarily reach the level of slant or not slander, libel or even necessarily trademark infringement, if it could be perceived as that, um, they might come after you. And that's not going to be good because you're going to have to spend money to defend yourself. Even if you're right, you're going to have to spend money to defend yourself. So I wanted to share a couple of ways that you can kind of help to mitigate that. You're not, there's not going to be a way to completely remove the liability for that, but there are ways that you can help to mitigate the risk for being drug into court or getting a cease and desist for what a customer writes on your website when reviewing your product and mentioning another brand. So the first thing you can do is you need to be monitoring your customer reviews. Um, this seems simple, but if your company is big and you've got a lot of business and you've got a lot of traffic, a lot of conversions, a lot of orders, it's going to be hard to do that. However, I highly recommend, you know, once a week, pro you know, once a week, once a month even probably just going through and reading your reviews. And if you see a customer who's mentioning a brand and it's like, and the review is just kind of off the wall, you know, they just throw throw that brand in, in the mud and it was kind of and it's unnecessary I personally would remove that review me personally it's always better to be a little bit more conservative or even necessarily just xing out I don't know if you can edit them x out the name of the brand um, but definitely definitely remove those comments if it's just inflammatory there's no basis like if it's a skin cream and they compare it to another skin cream and they say oh, the other you know brand gets the collagen from fetus you know tissue something crazy I remember back in the day that was a thing take that off get that off of there get that off of your website um, so monitor your website re um, always remove something that's plainly inflammatory if it's just plainly unsure remove it if it's borderline I would remove it definitely say on the conservative side put disclaimers all on your website that's the third thing. Put those disclaimers up there. One of the disclaimers that you should be putting on there is saying, these reviews are not necessarily the opinion of my brand or my company. These are the opinions of a third party. Um, you know, we can't necessarily control what other people say. You know, put that on there. One company that does it really, really well, and I stay on this app and this website, is Amazon. Go to Amazon, check them out, scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, and you can see their disclaimer how they say, you know, this, um, you know, these products are not intended to diagnose or treat or blah, 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 blah. Um, a disclaimer like that is going to be good. Make sure you say, these are not my opinions, these are, these are the opinions of a third party. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, is you want to disclaim any ownership of a trademark. Because again, when you mention a brand name like Clorox, that's actually a trademark. Um, and it could be perceived as trademark infringement, especially if it's, again, if it's on your website, the word is on your website, you don't necessarily even have to have the logo. If it's on your website, then that could be perceived as using their trademark inappropriately and um, it being trademark infringement. So put that, put a disclaimer on there saying, you know, we don't claim any ownership of, you know, trademarks for any other company except for our trademarks and you you can word it I can help you if you need to if you need me to um, but make sure you put that on there disclaim any and all trademarks and again if you're monitoring it like you should um, you might even think about removing those trademarks so anyway I hope this is helpful to you guys um, let me know if if you think it is um, as I think of these things, and again, I have my own e-commerce store and I'm going on and I'm doing all these things too, uh, preparing to open back up. Actually, I closed my store down for just a little bit, but I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to be posting more and more things on there. Um, if you guys have something you want me to share um, specific to any legal topic for your e-commerce business, let me know. Uh, this is what I do all day long. All right, thanks. And um, let me know if I can help you with anything else. You guys have a good day.